Welcome to WNL Sports Weekly. I'm Jeremy Franklin. Coming up, I'll be joined by men's lacrosse coach Gene McCabe, women's lacrosse captain Caitlin Anderson, and men's tennis captain Harry Shepard. But we begin with a quick look back at the weekend in Washington and Lee Athletics. Women's lacrosse earned its first win over Gettysburg since 1993, downing the third-ranked Bullets 12-9 at Watt Field. Women's tennis improved to 8-0 with a sweep of Virginia Wesleyan, and men's tennis defeated Wittenberg 8-1. Baseball split a conference doubleheader at Lynchburg with both games resulting in a 3-1 scoreline. Alexa Castellano won the high jump at the South Region final qualifier at Shenandoah where men's track and field recorded two runner-up finishes. And men's lacrosse opened up ODAC play with a 20-5 victory over Guilford. Here with me now is men's lacrosse coach Gene McCabe. Gene, welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure to be here, Jeremy. You had some tough losses early in the year to nationally ranked opponents. Last week you had uh, sound victories over Mary Washington and Guilford. What's been working well for the Generals as of late? Well, consistently, consistently what's worked well across the board is we've been doing a pretty good job clearing the ball, winning face-offs. Um, I think uh, where we've seen the most growth is, is really the harmony and connectedness on, on both the offensive end and the defensive end, and, uh, which I think has resulted in a, in a really good week last week of holding our opponents uh, down in terms of their, their goals and, and really putting up some pretty impressive um, goal-scoring margins you know, ourselves. You graduated a number of key contributors from last year's ODAC championship team. Uh, team. The program's all-time leading scorer, several starters on the defensive end as well. How is the process going as you have some younger guys stepping into bigger roles in the field? You know, uh, certainly there's been a growth process there. A uh, bunch of young, hardworking, talented kids who, um, you know, you know, that's something like seven or eight kind of new defensive players, first-time starters there on the defensive end. Um, the, the growth there has been really impressive, and it's a byproduct of how hard they're working in practice and how, just how hungry they are to have this thing come together. Offensively, you know, I think uh, you know, we've had some injuries there, not only uh, in addition to some graduation, uh, but I feel, I feel like you know, uh, they're finding their groove, and I think that's evidence of, uh, of you know, the way they played last week. ODAC play is underway now with that win over Guilford. What are your expectations for the conference this spring? Well, it's always very competitive. Um, you know, we take it one game at a time. You know, we were happy to, to host a Guilford team and, and get that first conference win. And, um, you know, but, you know, we know that it's very competitive and, and, and you know, we have to be uh, ready and prepared to play all these opponents. It's, it's, it's a league that, it's a conference that's really growing in terms of parity and depth um, as evidence of, you know, even some last year's scores with you know, Randolph making success and Bridgewater beating Hampton Sydney, things like that. So uh, we know that there's, uh, there's nobody that we can overlook. And, uh, and I think we, we kind of just plug in the next opponent and focus on what we need to do well and stick to who we are as a team and, and hope for some success. You have two key non-conference games remaining. Gettysburg tonight, the Virginia Lacrosse the Nation's Cup against Christopher Newport next Wednesday. How important are those contests? Well, I think, you know, they're important. Uh, there's no question about it. Uh, the next, the most important one is the one we play today against Gettysburg. Uh, getting a, a, a win against uh, you know a, a caliber of team like Gettysburg, who undoubtedly would be regionally ranked by the NCAA at the end of the season. That, that that's really important. And I think our kids understand that. Um, we've prepared hard for that, and we're excited about that opportunity. You know, uh, CNU is looking to have an excellent season already. And uh, we'll look forward to playing them and to help support uh, awareness for lacrosse the nations um, through the Virginia LTN Cup. Um, but it's a tough place to go play. Uh, but again, um, you know, we're excited about that opportunity and, and we'll focus on that w when, it, when it comes up. Gene, thank you for joining us. Good luck with the rest of the spring. Thank you so much for having me. With me in the studio is Harry Shepard, senior tennis captain from New York. Harry, welcome back to the show. Great, thanks. Always great to be back. You had a 6-3 to three win over Salisbury in late February. That was the 300th career victory for David Detweiler. What is it like for you and your teammates to be a part of that milestone for your coach? Yeah, no, that was great. i um, known coach probably, God, 10 years or so. Um, really great. He's one of the you know, most successful, most well-respected coaches in you know, the country. Uh, really happy to share that moment with him. And, you know, moving forward, I think our job now is to, you know, earn him his uh, more wins just going forward. 
In addition to beating Salisbury, you have another quality victory over Christopher Newport. You had a nail-biter against a good NC Wesleyan team. You also had a chance to take on a D1 power in UVA. What are your thoughts on the season as a whole so far? Yeah, no, I think uh, you know, starting off with UVA was a really good opportunity for us. Um, you know, they've won three or four national titles the last 10 years. Uh, and it was kind of a wake-up call, even though we we're playing you know, a top D1 team. Uh, it was good to you know, see what the competition would be like, kind of motivate us for the start of our D3 season. Uh, and as for that, I think, you know, it's gone well so far. Um, you know, NC Wesleyan matches close 5-4, had a lot of opportunities, definitely could have pulled through to get 5-4, 6-3. Um, but I think we rebounded really well uh, against Crystal Newport the next day uh, with a really good 7-2 win. Uh, and then Salisbury, I mean, we beat a really good Salisbury team who, who's, you know, after us, they've done really well. I don't think they've lost since then. Uh, so 6-3 result there was great. Um, and, you know, that was the 300th win for coach, which was great to do it against, you know, a really quality team. Um, and then, you know, of course, going to California, I thought it was a good experience. Um, didn't, you know, result the way we would have liked, but um, it was definitely enjoyable. And I think, you know, moving forward, uh, we have a lot of good opportunities ahead of us. What are your goals for 2020, both in terms of uh, individual objectives and for the team as a whole? Uh, I mean, I think individually, uh, I'd love to go back to individuals, um, the NCAAs at the end of the year. But I mean, more importantly, I think each individual's goal is to do the best they can for the team and put the team in the best position they can win. I think we're a very team-oriented uh, team uh, and put the individual goals kind of behind us. Um, but I will say, you know, in team goals, uh, I think we have a lot of good opportunities with, you know, Mary Washington this Saturday, Hopkins in a few weeks, Swarthmore and FNM in a few weeks too. Uh, and, you know, this couldn't be done without our great coaching staff, Detweiler, Coach Sam, Coach Jason, and then sophomore uh, Bobby Nooner, who, you know, can't play this year because of knee surgeries, but he has been instrumental in, you know, coaching during matches, organizing off-season workouts and stuff. Um, so all credit to them. Well, Harry, thank you for joining us. Best of luck with the rest of the year. Thank you. Appreciate it. Joining me now is Caitlin Anderson, Senior Lacrosse Captain from Manhasset, New York. Caitlin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Over the last two Sundays, WNL has recorded uh, big wins over Salisbury and Gettysburg, two other teams that were ranked in the top five. What's the significance of those wins for the team and for the program? Those are huge wins for us. Um, I think especially coming off the loss to a very strong Franklin and Marshall team at the beginning of the season. Um, it was really important for us to see those huge wins, especially some historic wins, the first time we've ever won at the Salisbury field. Um, so we're all just really excited. I think it's a really good omen for the rest of our season. Um, and also for the program, I think it just shows that we're a force to be reckoned with and everything that we do now is built upon the shoulders of the women who have come before us. So hopefully they're proud of what we're doing today. The generals graduated a great senior class. However, most of the starting defensive unit is back with uh, so many young players seeing time on attack and in the midfield. How important is the performance of the back line? I think for any team, a key is having a very strong defensive unit. Um, especially having Elliot Gilbert, our incredible goalie. Um, I think we have a lot of confidence going into every game and we always feel very prepared, um, especially with Coach O'Brien and Coach Ellis giving us um, some really great scouting reports for each team. Um, but we do have a lot of uh, great confidence in our attack too. They are young, but I think they've really gelled over the past few weeks, um, especially with their senior leadership and Danny Murray. She's fantastic and so talented and they have someone to learn from on a daily basis from her and Landon Shelley and Catherine Feria. So it's really great to see them gel and keep getting better every single practice. You won last year's ODAC Defensive Player of the Year Award. So far this season, it seems like you're even more active forcing turnovers, winning draw controls. How are you approaching your role on the field in 2020? So I'm just trying to do everything I can to be confident out on the field. Um, just trying to get better every day at practice and uh, preparing my teammates and helping them um, get better as well. And I think I just try to show up and do the best I can to help my team win, whether it's on the draw circle or um, in the defensive end. So it's been really fun to gel as a team and to keep getting better. And I know that next year we're leaving the defense in really strong hands in Katherine Eriks and Car Caroline Hall. So we're really, really happy with how everything's going so far. There is no let up in WNL's early season schedule. What is the key to maintaining focus as you continue to square off against tough opponents? Yeah, so our next opponent is Catholic. I um, believe they're ranked number 10 right now. So they're a very athletic, scrappy, fast team. So we're starting to prepare for them now, and it's going to be a really great game. It's always a battle with them. So we're really excited, and 
there's definitely a lot going on right now, so we're trying to keep focused and something that we emphasize is controlling the controllables and just showing up every day, being thankful that we have our team, being grateful that we can keep playing and that we have each other and just continuing to improve every day and hopefully end up on top in, at the end of May. Caitlin, thank you for joining us. Good luck with the rest of the year. Yeah. Here's a look at the upcoming weekend. Wrestlers Shane Connors, Rex Halliburton, and Ryan Luth head to Cedar Rapids, Iowa for the NCAA championship. Joe O'Connor will represent men's track and field at nationals, competing in the pole vault at the D3 meet in Winston-Salem. Back in Lexington, there's a lacrosse doubleheader on Saturday as the fourth-ranked women's team takes on number 10 Catholic and men's lack squares off against ODAC rival Hampton Sydney. Baseball visits Roanoke for a conference twin build. Men's tennis meets Mary Washington in Lynchburg, and women's tennis will face the 15th-ranked Eagles in Fredericksburg. For WNL Sports Weekly, I'm Jeremy Franklin. Thanks for watching.